Good morning, part two. Uh, I'm on my way back from having filed some documents at the court and traffic is kind of heavy because it is about 8.30 in the morning. So I figured I would uh, respond to a comment left by a commenter. Uh, this commenter said that he'd been watching, he watched a few Robbie Estra Estabrook videos. I prefer to call him Robbie Estrogen because if you've ever heard him speak, you'll know exactly why. But I would I would caution you that Robbie Estabrook is a sovereign citizen and you're not going to glean anything useful from him. He uh, he follows the the same school of sovereign citizenry that uh, what the hell is his name? Joe Common Joe, what the fuck was that guy's name? Anyway, it's the same kind of, uh, you know, dialectic school of thought. Anyway, the, the question or the comment said that there was a question that Robbie would ask the police and, and Robbie never got an answer that satisfied Robbie, which doesn't surprise me at all because Robbie is disingenuous and there is no answer to satisfy Robbie. If it doesn't comport to Robbie's worldview, it will not satisfy Robbie. You're not, like every other sovereign citizen, you're not gonna convince him he's crazy. So the question is, and it's been a while since I've read it, so you'll have to forgive me. It's something along the lines of what factual evidence do you have to show that the laws that you're trying to enforce actually apply to the person you're trying to enforce them on? He's asking this question to the police. And that's, it's a disingenuous question. Uh, number one, the police aren't obligated to respond. So if they give any response, uh, it would be out of the goodness of their heart. And Robbie should thank them for it. But obviously he's, he's trying to convince the police that the police don't know what the fuck they're doing. But it's just Robbie who doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. So the... So number one, the, the police don't have to uh, explain anything to him. And number two, they don't have to put on their case against the defendant yet. They, they don't owe any explanation to the defendant or to Robbie. They're just arresting him. They, they tell him what crime the person's being charged with. It's easy peasy, lemon squeezy. It's not, they don't have to put on their case yet. So the, the, the real malform of the question, the real malformation, sure, is, uh, is he's asking for factual evidence. And it's not a factual question. It is a mixed question of fact and law. Uh, various code sections say who they apply to. Like the uh, in California, the penal code, it's section 27. It says who it applies to. And it, and it lists exceptions either in 27 or around it. I, I think, anyway. Uh, so there's exceptions to who the code section applies to and who it doesn't. Um, but it, it lists it. California Vehicle Code, it's like 21050 or something like that. It also tells you who uh, the rules of the road apply to. So, so there you go. So the, the, only, the only question would be, it, it, lists, it lists the facts that are required for that particular code section to apply to you. The question becomes, if those facts if those if those various elements are present like are you in this were you in the state of california when you committed the crime if you weren't in the state of california when you committed the crime or if the crime wasn't committed in whole or in part in the state of california i forget exactly how they put it but basically if, if you go to to reno and you i don't know buy or sell drugs in reno and then you, you smoke them there so you're not doing anything illegal in California and then you come back you can't get charged in California for buying drugs because you didn't do it in whole or in part in California so so it's a it's a question of fact and law does the do the facts meet the elements of whatever particular statute that you're trying to fulfill so there's no, there's no magic bullet, there's no fact just in and of itself 
that would ever appease Robbie. And, and since he rules out the legitimacy of the laws, of the statutes, then you're never going to convince him. But on a, on a more, on a less philosophical level, on, on a more physical level, on a more practical level, uh, it's pretty obvious that the laws apply. It's a, it's a stupid question to have to ask in the first place. Men with guns think that the laws apply. Society thinks that the laws apply to you. They think that all the laws apply to you. They think the laws apply to everybody equally, generally speaking. And men with guns are going to enforce that law. And men with guns are going to uphold the decisions of the legislative bodies and of the judicial bodies. And if a, if a judge sentences you to 10 years in prison, but you don't think that the judge has proved to you sufficiently enough that the law applies to you, you're still going to go to prison. I mean, it's, it doesn't, they don't have to convince you that the laws apply to you. All they have to do is be able to enforce the laws against you. And they can do that. That's evident. That's abundantly clear because men with guns do it every day. Anyway, I hope that answers the question. Uh, Robbie, Robbie Estrogen is an expert at asking malformed question and then rejecting the evidence that's supplied to him. Thanks for watching. Have a great morning.